respectively V8. Those who race them believe there is no greater thrill than sampling side-by-side -side competition on a super speedway. The origins of the sport may be good old US of A, and in Oscar racing the combatants are proudly Australian, Ford and Commodore. Today the curtain comes up on a new season at Melbourne's Calder Park Thunderdome, and this is the man they have to beat, Brad Jones, three times national champion and touring car regular. In the NASCAR class, George Elliott opens the defence of his title against the strongest lineup of talent in many years. Seven Network welcomes you to Melbourne's Shrine of Speed for the opening round of the NASCAR and Oscar National Championships. Proudly presented by Castrol. Oils ain't oils. Hello Australia, I'm Mike Graham and welcome to Calder Park Thunderdome and the opening rounds of the NASCAR and Oscar National Championships for season 92-93. The V8 car wars continue here today. And Alan Moffat, it looks like the weather has been kind for the first time in two months in well, Victoria. Yeah, two months, Mike. And believe me, having driven at Daytona a number of times, this is one place you don't want the water running down the bank. Twin races today for each category. I guess the uh, idea with the weather is try and win the first. Well, get in and get a good uh, grip of things and get a feel for your car and then slingshot it into the final. That's what you need to do. Well, of course, this type of competition is a little different to uh, Mount Panorama at Bathurst, where we were last weekend. Of course, the V8s uh, didn't dominate there. The Nissan GTR certainly did. In Oscar racing, Brad Jones, and in the NASCAR category, George Elliott holds sway here today. And I guess, Mark Osler, as far as Oscar is concerned, Bradley Jones has always been the man to beat here. He really has been the man to beat. Three times Oscar champion on pole position once again with the new VP. But keep in mind that John Faulkner is only one-tenth of a second away from Brad. The top 13 covered by less than a second. That is tight. That's the type of racing we like. It sure is, and Brad's going to be struggling out there today. This is really bunching up the field. Well, George Elliott is the pole sitter for the NASCAR Classic here today, and with him at the moment, it's good afternoon to Andy Raymond. Thanks, Mike. And one man who's very happy they didn't have to qualify yesterday is last year's champion, George Elliott. Of course, George, this means that you get to start on the pole. Probably not the fastest pole we've ever won, but certainly the easiest, Andy. You're feeling the pressure at all as the defending champion? Do you think of the, the, the nerves and the butterflies in the stomach? Not really. I mean, I'm just taking it you know, one day at a time. We've We've got a new sponsor now with Promar Performance Products and that makes life a lot easier, you know, when you've got someone else out there that's giving you a bit of support. Section of the huge crowd here at Calder Park Thunderdome today as the NASCARs take to the circuit. George Elliott, pole sitter for the opening heat earlier this afternoon. However, there was plenty of drama. It started when Walter Giles went off the circuit and wound up uh, down on the ins field taking a tyre off the rim and bogging it completely. Giles had been up running in the top three practically all day in that uh, Centauri DuPont car. That brought out the yellows and after they completed their pit stops, it was Ian Thomas of the Gold Coast in car number 23 who was able to spread it out and go on and win the opening heat. That qualified the drivers for heat number two and here's how they line up. Thomas off pole position in car number 23 over John Stepanek. Third is Alan Grice in the Valvoline Pontiac. Fourth place held down by Robin Best of Tasmania. And fifth, number six, John Laws. Starting out of position number seven, it's Barry Blake of Western Australia. Car number 14 starts out of seven, Neville Lance of Western Australia. Eighth is 44, Adam Pay. Ninth is 91, Walter Giles on the comeback trail. And Trevor Oliver in the Pontiac starts in car number 86 out of position number 10. That's the lineup for the 50 lapper. And here we have them on the track, probably just a lap away from the pace car, cutting them loose for 50 circuits. And certainly the man that's going to be very hard to beat over the uh, distance here today is in fact going to be uh, Alan Grice. Grice in number 09, heads along the back straight. There's Robin Best in car number 11, Ian Thomas, 23. The Tropical Developments car, car number 41, John Stepanek. And here's our DuPont Centauri race cam pilot, and that is Walter Giles. They're starting to close them up now under the pace car. We should get a start this time as they come off the banking of the fourth turn. And here they come in for a start, splitting the field. Giles tried to do it, but down for the start, it'll be Ian Thomas to get away from Alan Grice. Down on the inside, it's Laws. The outside, it's Robin Best of Tasmania as they come beneath our speed camera into turn number one through there safely, working the back straight now and heading down there for the first time. And actually, Ian Thomas has got away to a good break. Heads them along the back straight over the uh, John Stepanek car. 
Third is still Robin Best of Tasmania, or Alan Grice, I should say, running in the second spot of turn number four, coming down for the completion of one, and the order unchanged. Great start by Ian Thomas. Did very strongly in the first heat, actually winning it, which is a great result for him. Loves his NASCAR racing, and he's certainly putting on a great turn of speed here at the opening round of the NASCAR series for 92-93. It's a field stream through thundering V8. 600 horsepower as the NASCAR screamed down into turn three on the second lap. And Alan Grice closing in for the kill. He was unlucky in the uh, earlier heat this afternoon, getting penalised for going down the pit lane when the pit lane wasn't open. It's a bit of a tricky one how you can get down it if it isn't open, but nevertheless, regulations and uh, cost him uh, any position he could hope for in the first heat, but look at this now. He's not waiting. Alan Grice sweeps down the inside. The Dick Midgley Pontiac Grand Prix makes it look easy. Pushes Ian Thomas wide into Buick. Now, Alan Grice takes control. Ian Thomas drops back to second place. John Laws in fourth, Robin Best splits them, he's in third position, that's the top five with Walter Giles. Very important to get into the groove in a hurry in a 50 lap race here, if there's very few incidents, uh, 50 laps goes by so quickly and uh, Grice has certainly got that formula in his mind, he knows get away from the field, get a nice cushion, back off when you have to. Yes, he's got it all dialed in. Here's uh, Walter Giles carrying our DuPont Centauri race cam. Comes up on the inside of the Laws Brothers entry, car number six, trying to ping him before the end of the straight. Now gets him just on the entry to the uh, first turn. And Giles actually was one of the uh, outstanding drivers in the opening heat today. Ran into problems, as we showed you earlier, that uh, touch with another car and finishing up on the infield. But he came storming back through the field. And he looks like he's in good shape here today. The car certainly very, very strong certainly strong in the engine department. There's George Elliott fighting his way back. He's in the bumper of John Laws as well. Elliott starting off pole position this morning, had some troubles, fighting his way back through the field, slips up to John Laws there onto the bumper of Walter Giles. Keep in mind, there's a compulsory pit stop after 10 laps of this race. And that's going to uh, throw the strategic battle wide open. Well, it does it if you don't have a yellow flag period. That's where it really throws it open. So Grice and the Valvoline, the Frank Midgley car from the United States. Grice hired as the chauffeur of that car. He leads the race over Ian Thomas. Then Robin Best of Tasmania. That's the group we're following at the moment. Best in the number 11 car. Oh, look at the bunch up here. George Elliott sticks the nose of the Chevy Lumina under Walter Giles' car. So they sweep up under Robin Best, car 11. Anytime you see that happening, you know the fellow in front is definitely holding you up. This is that battle. Sorry, Al, this is the battle for third, fourth and fifth. It's a case of just not getting your slingshot uh, 100%, but he's certainly got the power to do the job. He just needs to line these two up in front of him in the right spot on the track where he can take advantage of getting by safely. Walter Giles has a look down the inside of Robin Best. It's very close to the rear bumper. Back on the juice. He's trying to get him on the inside and nail him before the next turn. But Robin Best has got plenty of power in that number 11 car. He pulls him going down the back straight, so he wasn't able to do anything. And this is frustrating Elliot who's sitting in behind them trying to get a draft but probably picking the wrong car. No, he can't get by two of them at once, that'd be far too dicey. But he's got to pick his moment. But uh, old Best was a little loose there, that's not too good for the heartbeat when you feel the rear end of one of these things moving around and the, the wall for a windscreen wiper. Robin Best and the Junior Johnson Ford T-Bird. Great believer in Ginger Johnson's products. Runs a number of his chassis, likes his engines as well. Spends a lot of time in the United States. <coughs> Struggling a bit here. Alan Grice Street at the field. Up ahead of him, Ian Thomas. Two times Australian NASCAR champion Robin Best in third position. Coming under a lot of fire for Walter Giles and George Elliott. Well, Giles keeps poking the nose of that uh, DuPont Centauri car down on the inside. And Elliot just can't get uh, a shot at them because, as you can see here, Best is working the outside, Giles is the inside, and whilst uh, Elliot might be a little quicker than both of them, there's just not enough room to pass. His only shot is on the inside coming off this corner, down through the tri -oval. Ten laps down as Alan Grice goes across the tri -oval, so now we're into the position. There goes Elliot. We've got a yellow flag lap here. We'll see the boys heading in for their compulsory tyre stop. Meanwhile, they're battling for supremacy. This was a good move from Elliot down the inside. Nice and patient, Portland. mate. Yes. He just waited there. He took advantage of it. I think uh, uh, the Tasmanian car... Yeah, there he goes again. Just 
a little bit uh, tentative on the approach to the banks. And uh, George nailed the opportunity and off and running. You can see now what a gap he's put on those two cars. And here's Giles again in the Buick coming down on the inside of the Tasmania and finally gets him. Maybe uh, Elliot showed him the way to do that the previous lap. And as Mark made mention, it won't be too long before we see them trying to pit. And the pit stops will determine the outcome of this one today. Well, they're running easy at the moment. I say easy, they're running in a fashion that isn't uh, causing too much danger of a yellow flag coming out. And uh, this is the kind of time to make hay while the sun is shining. This is the battle for second that we have been following. And that, of course, is Ian Thomas and uh, George Elliott in number 55. Elliott coming along the back straight now, closing. Car seems strong. Moves right up behind Thomas. Very, very close indeed. May uh, pull out of the draft halfway down the straight on the try over. Get him on the inside. He sits in close behind him. Grice is out to probably a 10 uh, car length break over the field at this stage. Here's second and third. Thomas from Cairns in northern Queensland in the Tropic uh, Coast Developments car. And right behind him, George Elliott, who wrapped up the NASCAR championship last year. Beautifully prepared Oldsmobile Delta. Ian Thomas, 46 years of age. And the Cairns driver has shown a great improvement this year. Ran in ARCA racing in the States. Spends a bit of time in the States and enjoying his racing on both continents. And here he's got a real battle on his hands as George Elliott. So a good way to NASCAR develop champ. your skills. Go overseas and match it with the best. And Terry Byers, meanwhile, has moved up to eighth position for the back of the grid after he broke that shock absorber in heat one. So Byers really on the charge as well. That's a good effort. Uh, Tony Southwell, the first of the cars to pit at the moment. He's in changing outside uh, tyres. But he is the only one that's headed in there at this stage of the race. Ian Thomas, car 23, the immaculate Oldsmobile Delta. Won the best presented car award here last season. And there hasn't been any sort of decline in the standard of preparation. This car looks superb. Well, he's holding Elliot off here at the moment, but uh, I don't know how long he can keep it up. George seems to be pressing him on the banks. And just not quite enough room to get himself by, but that, certainly looking the better of the two cars here just at the moment. And you'll notice that Walter Giles has been able to pick the pair of them up again. So Giles uh, closes in in the DuPont entry again, the Buick. Alan Grice. There's second, third and fourth. Alan Grice, meanwhile, has opened up the lead to almost three seconds, 2.87. Last time around, so Grice, he's slowly pegging away, opening up a nice little buffer. Well, Grice, certainly in the box seat to win this one today, but it all depends on the pit stop. They well, exit turn number four, they come back onto the start, finishing straight. Here's Elliot, working and hedging away at the inside here of Ian Thomas as they go down the straight into the next turn. Oh, yes. they touch. Yes. Little yeah. kiss of the panels, and Ian Thomas looks like a tyre rubbing there. Yeah, that was uh, pretty forceful, but I think uh, George had had enough of it. He, he knew he could get by, and just every time he wanted to move into position, uh, the Queensland car made it difficult for him, but now he's got the tyre rubbing, and it'll be making it very nervous for him. That smoke will be coming into the cab, and he'll just be wondering, gee, I don't want to blow out with these walls waiting for me for... Uh, for a catch fence. When he moves over to cover his ground as Walter Giles seizes on the opportunity. You can see the smoke puffing out of the Oldsmobile. He tries, moves up to try and get third position. But Ian Thomas is going to hang out there as long as he can. And he'd be desperately waiting for a yellow flag lap now. So he can get into the pits, not only do the compulsory tyre change, but also get this bodywork out of the way. I don't think he's aware of any uh, bodywork rubbing, actually, at this stage, because uh, with uh, the likelihood of no yellows to come, there's nothing really wrong with uh, heading to the pits and uh, leading the fast guys in, into there at the moment. Certainly got a good whack from Walter Giles. You can see he left his signature on the side of the car there. Then again, I've got a feeling someone left theirs on Walter's early in the day as well. <laughs> so Grice continues to leave this one. As sure. they lead lap number 19. Giles still continues in the battle here. Third and fourth. George Elliott some three and a half seconds down on Alan Grice. This is the battle for third and fourth, as Mike said, from four and a half seconds behind Alan Grice. And I guess, Alan, the longer they get caught up in this little jill, they're going to keep letting Grice go further away. Money in the bank for Grice, yep. 20 laps down now, 30 to go. 
Let's check out how they're running on the track at the moment. Alan Grice, your race leader in the Valvoline Pontiac over George Elliott. Third is Ian Thomas there, followed by Walter Giles and Robin Bess. Rounds out the five. Don't go away. We'll be back for the concluding stages. So we are no to Walter Nathan. 23 laps remain. This scrap continues between Walter Giles carrying the DuPont Centauri race cam and just ahead of him is of course Ian Thomas of Cairns in northern Queensland and they have been at it. Third and fourth and he works to the high side so Elliot obviously is thinking about going to the pits. Ian Thomas. Ian Thomas rather. Heads and in. He heads down pit road to make the first of the compulsory stops. Well, I don't think this will really disadvantage him that much, provided there isn't a yellow later in the race, Mike. But I think he just had enough of that tire burning away and smoking him to death. Uh, and it looks like Whoa. nothing more than tires. There's the and, yellow oh, flag. Oh, what a oh. pity. Car 44, Adam Pay gets oh. it loose. That's that's bad luck for But Thomas. they may not stop the race, because he is down on the pit over now. There's the yellow flag. Well, I so. think they were trigger hot with that one, because he caught it again and uh, heads along the back. Now Ian Thomas finds himself in. That is the cruel luck of this uh, mandatory pit stop. Everyone will be able to come in shortly. That really is the lottery system. And uh, as it turned out, they weren't getting uh, a stop fast enough that would have uh, lit up pit lane with the neon signs. All trying to find their pit bays. Grice going in and the pace car staying out there. About half distance in this opening round of the Australian uh, NASCAR Championship from Calder Park. The Frank Midgley crew already on the scene with Alan Grice, the Valvoline Pontiac, changing the outside uh, tyres. Uh, mandatory to use a floor jack. These fellows can only get the car up with that jack handler, unlike the cars we have at Bathurst, where the car goes up on four pogo sticks, uh, controlled on board by air. Uh, it's quite a handful to get a 1,600-pound car up there but uh, fairly efficiently executed there by the Grace crew. It was a pretty uh, quick stop too, Alan. They were able to get in and out, miss the pace car and not go down a lap, which is something Ian Thomas uh, was unable to do. Car number 23, who pitted only a lap before the yellow came out. So Grice at number 09, finding the car along the back straight. All of them have just about been in and out. Long stop there for Giles in the 91 car. And the pace car leading them around between uh, turns three and four. Well, this is a tricky rule, but everybody And the pace car has gone off into the pit, so the race will resume. Coming across the line, and Ian Thomas in 23 gets away smartly. Elliot's in there as well. Now, with a lot of ground to make up, Alan Grice, in this, if he is in fact on back one lap, I would think not. He would be leading after uh, 29 laps on the same lap as George Elliott and Terry Byers, also John Laws, Max Dumsney, and uh, Walter Giles. Robin Best, Ian Thomas, Neville Lance, and Barry Blake, unfortunately, uh, going uh, down a lap. So Grice has been able to do that pit stop and maintain his lead. So Good work on Frank Midgley and his team's behalf. George Elliott, 13 seconds now behind. 25 second gap back to Terry Byers. And Terry Byers has done a tremendous job finding his way back from that last position on the grid start. So the great campaigner of NASCAR, Terry Byers, moves up to third position. Behind George Elliott and Alan Grice as the race resumes. Tire stops, compulsory tire stops at least out of the way. So Alan Grice now will be trying to get a nice clean race, hold station, maintain that buffer and bring it home. We'll certainly be watching the horizon for any smoke screens, any anybody kissing the wall because uh, his job now is to uh, to bring it home and uh, he can be as creative as he wants uh, for uh, lap times but he certainly has to watch somebody else's uh, indiscretion. Well, that break, uh, 12 seconds, uh, Alan Grice over George Elliott, then Terry Byers, John Laws, Max Dumsney, and Walter Giles. They're on the same lap, that's positions one through six. As I mentioned before, Robin Best, Thomas, Lance, and Mead are down a lap, and they are holding position seven through ten. Elliott to Byers, that's uh, second to third. <coughs> it's about six and a half seconds, so we'll see if Terry Byers can close the gap. I'm George Elliott. 
Yes. Right time that pit stop nicely, and uh, you, that's not luck. That's uh, decision time. That's his judgment, perhaps in conjunction with the uh, instructions from the crew chief. But nevertheless, you've got to be able to make that pace car, make that yellow light situation work for you. And uh, Alan Grice has done that here this afternoon. Alan Grice, a guy with enormous experience, the first Australian ever to qualify for a Winston Cup race in the United States. Took to NASCAR racing like a duck to water. But he's also pretty good in the touring cars, two times Bathurst winner, and also won the Christmas NASCAR 500 here in 1989. So he's no stranger to uh, NASCAR racing. He's got himself a great car here. Pontiac. Sponsored by Valvoline, Elliott to Byers now six seconds, so Byers slowly closing the gap on George Elliott in second place. And there is Terry Byers, up the back straight, 15 laps to go. He's got a lot of work to do. As we said before, he's got a great race setup in this car. And George Elliott would not be out of his reach. So, uh, Terry Byers here, number 26, he's picked up a sponsor in Aristocrat Poker Machines. So he's got a handle on a good sponsor, if nothing oh, else. Well, if you have to punch it, why not? Yes. So he's done well after problems this morning. Mark has already uh, made mention of that, coming back through the field of Pontiac Grand Prix. The uh, driver from uh, Wollongong, who's been a uh, member of the uh, NASCAR set in Australia since the uh, category first commenced back in uh, 1988. Well, he's chopping his lead down all the time. He's getting closer and closer to Elliott. Well, Terry Elliott's Byers. got a good car set. He, uh, he looked good there in the, before the yellow flag, and uh, it's going to have to be a very determined uh, uh, third place here to uh, unseat him. It's under five seconds now. Byers flies down the back straight. All hooked up, 600 horsepower V8s. Gets the car loaded up through the turn, looking nice and smooth as he picks his way through the traffic in search of George Elliott. Yellow flag out again. Well, here's a decision time for Grace now. If he's not absolutely happy, he may think about sliding in again. But uh, if his car is running strong, he'll just sit out there, let the laps count down for themselves under the pace car, and hold his lead, although the others will close up on him. Well, we're looking around for... I see them removing... Yeah. Debris on uh, turn number two, pulling a, a bumper or something off there that's uh, come adrift from a car. So they close them up under the pace car with Alan Grice, the race leader, on 38 laps completed. 38 of 50 completed for Grice. Still holding that, uh, that narrow gap. That's going to close up uh, Ian Thomas and, uh, and Terry Byers. As we have a look uh, out of the uh, DuPont Centauri race cam coming along the back straight. You can hear by the revs of the engine on that DuPont car, they're, they're keeping them up there. They're not exactly just backing off and throwing them into overdrive cruise mode. They're keeping that oil warm and uh, keeping themselves on the ball. Eight laps remain in the run to the checkered flag. Pace car about ready to come off the uh, circuit drops into pit lane and Grice gets away smartly holding that substantial lead as he comes across the line Grice the race leader George Elliott running in second Terry Byers I'm sorry up to second George Elliott back to third and Max Dumsney that's the order as they move on to the back straight they're on the same lap Byers starting out and around in the chase after Alan Grice his car in the second heat has looked particularly strong there's Grice the Valvoline machine Terry Byers is really flying pushing his way through the pack well it's hard to swallow a pace car situation Mike but uh, when you're in the lead and you've got it under control like Grice has he uh, he still should be able to move out and maintain a lead that will be comfortable enough for him George Elliott I believe is uh, having some mechanical problems He's dropped right down to the back of the grid. The man on the charge is Terry Byers, but uh, he's he's really trailing by about 100 metres, uh, maybe even a little bit more. He's not going to be able to pick that up inside the distance with about six laps remaining. Five laps to go as they cross the start-finish line. So it's Grice, Terry Byers, Max Dumsney, Walter Giles, John Laws, and uh, poor old Georgie Elliott. Dumsney, the back. Dumsney has been uh, a guy who's done uh, well here today. They blew an engine in the heat race uh, earlier today. They've changed an engine uh, complete in about uh, just over an hour, hour and a quarter. There is George Elliott. 
and he's slowing uh, appreciably on the front straight the defending uh, nascar champion as alan grice comes by the start finishing line with four laps to go he's leading from terry byers who really is motoring very very hard indeed max dumsney in third and the uh, second of the valvoline cars going down into turn number one this is a great return to form for Grice at the Thunderdome. The Dick Midgley Pontiac Grand Prix beautifully turned out car running the Valvoline colours. Alan Grice looking very much in control. He's got Terry Byers after him. There's Terry just in that three that swept through out of the shot. He's got a lot of work to do. Well, Byers has uh, been able to pick the cars up in a straight line and really...